What's up guys, welcome to Voicey here, this is your host that made creme brulee for the first time last night and it's pretty baller, Captain Zack, and today's subreddit is r slash I don't work your lady. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode. This story's called, I didn't design your damn shirts, Karen. Tale from years ago, when I worked for a consulting firm. Sorry if the details are a little fuzzy, this was a long time ago. I'm also long-winded and sleep-deprived, so it's a rambling one. The office layout on my floor had four private offices that were for four different independent contractors. One specialized in graphic design, one in copywriting, one in media sales, and one in advertising campaigns. All of the assistants for these different specialists sat in one large room out front at our tiny desks. Each of us worked for only one of the consultants, but were happy to pass on basic information to the other ones. We, however, had no contact info or calendar access for anyone else's boss. I was sitting at my desk doing SEO work when Karen flung open the front door violently enough it actually banged against the wall. I was the closest to the door, so I jumped up and looked over. Karen took this as a cue to storm over to my desk and throw down a CD. Did you people make this? She snarled. I picked up the CD and looked at her. No idea what she was talking about, um, was my brilliant reply. Did you people make this? Oh, good. Volume was the only reason I didn't know what you were talking about. Thanks, Karen. Karen snatches the CD from me. We had these t-shirts designed by graphic designer dude, and he gave us these files and the printer said they're all messed up. He ripped us off. Oh, so a uh, graphic design dude made this for you? Well, he's not here right now. Karen launches into a loud, profane tirade, questioning my ability, my education, my personal attractiveness, and parentage, which, yeah, aren't the best, but that has nothing to do with her stupid t-shirts. I finally put on my mom librarian voice, I am neither, but you know the voice I mean, ma'am, ma'am. Surprising us both, Karen stopped talking. Ma'am, I do not work for graphic dude. Best I can do is give you a pen and paper to write him a note. But if you worked with him, you should have his email or phone. Email is the best way to get in touch with him. When will he be back in the office? No idea. I don't work for him. You'd best call or email him or leave a note. Well, go in his office and check his calendar and tell me where he is. No, couldn't even if I wanted to. His office is shut and locked. Well, unlock it. I don't have a key, we just work in the same building. Call him and tell him I'm here and I need to speak with him! No, I don't have his number and I'm not his secretary. Not really true, I have his number, but hell no, I'm not playing receptionist. I spent a ton of money with you and I demand- Ma'am, you do not spend a ton of money with me. I don't work for graphic dude. Yeah, yeah, you don't do the computer stuff, you're just the secretary. Now get him on the phone! I took a second to figure out how me sitting in front of the computer and using it when she came in equals not doing the computer stuff, or how secretary equals no computers, but this wasn't the brightest tool in the box, and she was giving me a headache. So I went to my boss and asked for her to dislodge the Karen barnacle for my life. Ma'am, I'd be happy to give a message to Graphic Guy. Where is he? I don't know, you can leave a message. Are you the manager? Yes? She's a consultant. She is self-employed by her own company, so I guess she is her own manager. Technically mine too, but neither of us were sure what Karen was going for here. Well, I want to speak to the owner. Owner of what, exactly? Karen turns and points at me. I crap you not, this woman snarls. That girl there. My boss and I are sharing a look. My boss says to Karen, very slowly, You, you want to speak to her owner? Karen nods emphatically. I want her fired! Other guy in the office pipes up. Don't you mean disowned? My boss glares at him. Ma'am, I am her boss and I'm not firing her. And we have nothing to do with graphic, dude. We can't help you. Please leave and try to get in touch with him on your own. 
More shrieking. Karen is now questioning both my and my boss's work ethic, personal grooming, and voting preferences. My best guess is she got herself all worked up into a righteous indignation rage at the t-shirt issue before she came in, and she just transferred all that ire to me because I opposed her will. But her anger at me for not working for Graphic Dude is way out of proportion. Graphic Dude's assistant has walked into the office during all this, and being the accommodating soul he is, offers to look at the file. Karen stomps over and hands it to him, while he explains that Graphic Dude is out of town at a wedding and won't be back until Tuesday. Graphic Dude, by the way, does not do any work outside the office, which upsets Karen more. The file opens up, her Graphic Dude's assistant dude, it's some hideous summer family reunion t-shirt. Other dude looks at Karen, so what's wrong with it? The screen printer said the file is all messed up. Graphic Dude's assistant dude looks confused. It's fine. No, it's not! She shrieks. Now other guy is trying to explain that the file is fine, but she can get in touch with Graphic Dude next week. Not good enough for Karen. She keeps yelling, while assistant dude looks at the image more closely. Oh, uh, are you Mrs. Karen McBenchface? Yes! Oh, uh, okay, I can fix this for you. Karen smiled broadly, praises him in a sickeningly sweet, good puppy manner, and saunters over to us to explain how she's still going to get us all fired, and it's about time, blah blah blah. Assistant dude comes over and hands her a new disc and sends her on her merry way. My boss goes back to her office and shuts the door, telling me not to come get her if that harpy ever comes back in. I look at assistant dude, who is grinning. Assistant dude is a college sophomore, graphic dude grossly underpays to gain experience, and he gives no craps, so I know something is up. Okay, assistant dude, what did you do? Come, take a look! On his computer is the image Karen wanted on her t-shirts, opened from the disc she brought in. Freaking Comic Sans. McBiscuit Family, Reunion 20XX, with a dumb picture. Okay. And here's what I just saved on a new disc for her. And shows the same image where he has replaced the text with Bench Pay Me and a middle finger graphic. Assistant Dude is smiling. I remembered her name finally, he said. Graphic Dude was pissed. She sold in this sob story about why she couldn't pay half up front like we normally do. And he made an exception. Then once she had the files, she refused to pay for it. Originally, we were going to get the shirts printed for her, but she stiffed us and took the file and ran. She figured she could just get them printed herself. I told Graphic Dude not to give her a print-ready file for approval, but he thought since we were going to handle the shirt order. Yeah, I get it now. She likely went to the cheap local screen print shop that I happen to know doesn't have anywhere close to the latest version of any graphic programs. This comes up a lot in this office. If a customer uses that shop, the shop guy will try to open a file saved from the latest version of graphic software and go, Can't open it. Go get it saved as an earlier version. And sends customers back. This Karen wasn't bright enough to remember anything past, File no work! You bad! And of course, you all are probably quicker than me and realize what it took a minute to dawn on me. Karen gave assistant dude her disc. He saved the new image on a new disc and gave it to her. She left the original file in our office, so unless she was smart enough to make a copy, she now no longer has the file she stiffed graphic design dude on. I am sad to say that she never came back in. I hate a story with no follow-up, but such is life. Myself, I hope she got the shirts printed without anyone catching the file change. I brought assistant dude some banana bread I baked the next day to thank him for his efforts. Okay, I'm just saying right now, any type of, uh, like, insert fruit or vegetable bread is usually really good. For instance, uh, zucchinis, they're all, they're all right, they're nothing to write home about, but zucchini bread slaps. I don't know why anyone decided to put zucchini in bread and make it sweet, but it's good. Bananas, bananas slap, but you know, they're, they're just a fruit, but make a banana bread. Oh man, I'm gonna love you. Like, I've had a number of uncharacteristically homosexual encounters just because the guy brought me some banana bread and I've got a word and reputation to uphold, no matter the cost. This story's called, How Dare I Mess Up Karen's Milkshake?
Hello! New poster and on mobile, so please forgive any errors. Context, I live in a major city in my country, though out of the fray of tourist attractions. My boyfriend at the time, we were both around 15 when this story took place, we'd been broken up for several years now, worked in a high-end touristy neighborhood for a large ice cream chain, as pay tended to be much better in this area. The people who frequent the shops there are either very wealthy or are tourists, though occasionally middle-class locals would venture in for a little fun. We had been dating for six months, apparently a very big deal to our freshman year of high school selves, so we decided to be a little fancy and go out in this area of town for a nice lunch and a walk down on the waterfront. We didn't dress up too crazy, but I was wearing a nice outfit since it was a special occasion. He even gifted me a necklace and it was a really lovely afternoon. Well, it was a really lovely afternoon. We decided to stop into the ice cream shop where he worked to say hi to his coworker friend. Only one person was working despite it being a pretty busy area as it was a weekday. We chat with her for a bit. She was a woman in her mid-30s and she gives us each a free ice cream cone. It was nice and I was very dazzled by his work perks. We say goodbye and my boyfriend and I decided to shop around after finishing our ice cream, admiring all the fancy clothes we would buy if we had the funds. We're trying on some goofy clothes and taking funny photos, typical high school fun, when he gets a phone call. It's his coworker, and she says we have to come back right away. He's trying to tell her he has the day off and we're out on a date, but she insists it's an emergency and we're the only people nearby. So, we go back to the ice cream shop. It actually was an emergency. The freezer in the back that held all their stock, nearly $10,000 worth of ice cream in giant tubs, this place was a huge operation, had broken and the ice cream was beginning to melt. She had to go to the regional warehouse to get a company freezer van to salvage what they could as they were losing money by the second. The catch. She wanted us to work the store and business was starting to pick up. They found a company shirt for me to wear that was so big I was practically swimming in it and decided that even though I had no understanding of how anything worked and had never even had a job before, it was perfectly okay for me to work the counter. And before you say I was technically working there, I never got paid for the couple of hours I was working and really was not qualified to be representing the brand. The location later shut down. There were a lot of subpar business practices happening there that contributed. So with two 15 year olds in charge, the manager heads out and the people start to flow in. Again, I have zero training and my boyfriend is stuck on the register, so I am scrambling trying to figure out which ice cream is which as behind the counter there are no flavor labels. I just try to tell people I'm new or just helping out for the day and most people are pretty cool and accepting of this and don't mind the couple extra minutes it was taking me to serve them. Keyword, most. Enter Karen. I later ended up working at a different luxury ice cream store later in my high school career and learned to spot the dreaded beast. But my sweet summer child's naive baby self had no clue. She looked very typical of someone who was a native of our area. Very business-y and clean cut, well put together with a permanent scowl painted across her lips. She came up to me and seemed nice at first. She complimented the song that was playing and even did a little dance. This put me at ease. She seemed so cool. She ordered her milkshake, the first non-ice cream cone order of the day. As she was the only customer in the store at the moment, my boyfriend walks me through how to make it. I don't know why he didn't just make it and spare me her wrath, but oh well. We don't bother explaining that I'm new or anything, since we figure she'll put two and two together with how he's explaining to me how to make it. It takes me a while to make it and find everything as I didn't work there, but eventually I finish the milkshake and it actually looked pretty good. I give it to her and she gets really weird. She walks towards the register, sipping slowly. My boyfriend rings her up and Karen stops drinking it. I'm not paying for this. I'm sorry? It's too thick. It's like she doesn't even know how to make a milkshake. Well, to be fair, I didn't. I'm sorry, ma'am. She's new and still learning. Well, she's incompetent and I'm not paying for this. 
I could see my boyfriend getting frustrated and I felt tears pricking at the corner of his eyes. He tells her she has already drank the beverage so she has to pay. Begrudgingly, she obliges. She walks toward the door, hovers there, takes another sip, walks back to the register. This is ridiculous, I want a refund! I'm sorry, but I can't do that. But I can have her remake it. <sighs> Fine, but I don't want that girl making it. My boyfriend, annoyed, makes her a new milkshake, the exact same way I had made mine. She seemed pleased with the one he made and left us with no tip. Just a snide comment as she walked out. You really should fire that girl, and I'm leaving you both a bad review. We watch her walk out the door, drinking from both milkshakes. We decided to close the shop at that point and wait for the manager. I then got my nice clothes, hair, skin, covered in chocolate ice cream melt as we helped her load up the freezer van to take the ice cream to the warehouse. Not really a conventional I don't work here lady as I really did look like an employee, but I still can't believe one, that the manager thought it was okay for me to represent the store and actually work, two, how passive aggressive and rude the Karen was, three, that I never got paid and we never got to finish our date. Oh well, at least it makes for a funny story now, although uh, my 15 year old self definitely was not laughing. Oh, I know exactly how that is. Um, when I was learning how to operate a gas station uh, POS system, and no, that does not stand for piece of shit, despite what I may have thought at the time. Anyways, um, a lot of people were very understanding because I was still learning and I was just like around that age, I think, maybe 14, 15, and uh, my dad owned the store, so, and everyone was local, the customers were all regular, so everyone was very understanding. However, um, I had to relearn it uh, last year as I was working at my uncle's gas station, and it was a lot more busy. This was, you know, on a busy highway, so I had a lot of impatient people that were just like, Argh! they were just really mean, rude people and not understanding uh, of the fact that I'm still learning and I'm kind of new and like, <laughs> I'm not even getting paid for this. It was just something to do at the time. I mean, I got paid like a hundred bucks uh, every few weeks, but that's that's negligible. But also, I can understand the whole impatience behind the customers, because it's like, oh, come on, why does a new person have to be doing my crap? Why can't I have someone experienced and quick? Because I got to get out of here. And you know what? Maybe if you're polite and you tell them, hey, uh, I'm in a hurry. Can you like, you know, learn with someone else? Maybe they'll maybe they'll be understanding if you're if you're not rude. But if you're a jerk, then you deserve the slowness. Sorry, bud, but you're a jerk. This story's called, Today I Fudged Up by Getting Elected to a Local Government Position. Throw away for obvious reasons, and English is not first language also on mobile. So I recently got elected to the head of a local county. Best translation I could find. It was a local election, so nobody even cared. The only reason I think I won is because I have the same name as a famous person from my country. So today I was totally I only barely finished high school and didn't even go to a college or university. A college education or higher is required, but when I filled in the file to run, I just had to tick a box. So today at a meeting, so today at a meeting they were talking about the worth of the houses in our county and how the prices are higher than our revenue or is or some crap. I was asked for my opinion, <laughs> but I didn't understand anything. I'm thinking of resigning and quitting, but I need to give a reason. I checked. The only reason I did this is because it only cost 15 euros to sign up, and I thought it would be funny to say I would be running. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, man. That makes me think back to the, um... 2016 election memes uh <laughs> everyone was saying oh uh i feel like trump was just running for 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 craps and giggles and then he actually won and now he doesn't know what to do <laughs> uh i love crap like that i mean it's it's you know kind of scary that our uh that the political system might allow for such inexperienced individuals but it's also the beauty of democracy. That was the appeal of Andrew Jackson back in the day, because he was very much an everyday kind of dude, but maybe to the extreme on that end of the spectrum. 
Not really a positive example for this, because I'm pretty sure he's unanimously considered a pretty bad president. Because there was that rampant abuse of the spoil system where you can just appoint people to positions even though they have no business being in those positions just because they're your friend and you're the president and you can allow them to do a crappy job at something and make bank. Anyways, man, stick to it. Maybe you'll, maybe you'll do good, do well, grammar. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.